Hello everyone and welcome to part 2 of this video series where I put together a Princeton Reverb replica. It's now time to tackle the electronics, certainly the harder part for my side, and then we'll finalize the chassis and put it all together in the cabinet, which is probably the most rewarding part of this whole build. So to finish off the look of the chassis, I needed to make the face plates. I spent a lot of time on Illustrator trying to match the look of the originals, but also including a little bit of my own design. I also made sure that the file was 100% vectors, so it could be read by the laser I was using. I then engraved that logo using the laser cutter and a sheet of two-ply acrylic. I'll put a link in the description below. This material is very nice to make signs out of. Um, it gives you a pretty good contrast and it, in this case it really matches the look of the original quite nicely. It was the first time for me making a custom fiber board. I struggled a little bit with the process at the beginning, uh, especially when it came down to putting in the rivets, I used the hammer at first and then the drill press and then I actually went back to the hammer and it turns out that using a really stiff support material really helps. Here you can see what they look like in the end. Not perfect, but it will totally be good enough to wire a bunch of resistors and capacitors. Moving on to my electronics workbench and you can see I have just a little support for the chassis and the very few basic tools you need to solder properly all the electronics together. I started then by soldering the speaker jack, nothing very complicated there. And from there on I'm mostly following the Mojo Tone procedure for assembling uh, a Princeton Reverb kit. So it starts off with putting the facades on and then uh, starting to wire the transformers one by one, starting with the power transformer and making sure to twist the wires nicely. Then the output transformer as well and the reverb driver. Then I'm putting the small uh, components, resistors on the output tubes, sockets, wiring the reverb ins and outs and then also the main inputs um, with coaxial cable, hoping to cut down a little bit on the noise. Then I made sure I had the potentiometers in the right spots and I attached the few wires that leave from them. And here's a quick look at the chassis before I assemble more things to it. Moved on with the little bias board. I thought it was maybe good to start with that and that went just fine. And you can see I, I also added a bias spot to my circuit. Moving on to the main board, uh, starting off by just uh, placing the components without soldering anything there. Uh, I also marked uh, the outer foil of my capacitors to put them in the right orientation, hopefully cutting out down a little bit on the noise there as well. And uh, then I'm just adding wires and more wires and more wires and finally cleaning that up a little bit but it still looks really messy at that point and then it was finally time to put the board back into the chassis took a fair bit uh, of time to solder all the wires properly uh, check the wiring a few times uh, and then it was finally time to power it up um, so obviously, without a variac to bring it up slowly, it's always a bit of a stressful moment uh, to plug the amp for the first time. Uh, but I felt confident enough uh, after checking a few times on wiring that it was going to be, well, hopefully it was going to be fine. And uh, with no tubes installed, I plugged it in and checked my first voltages around the power transformer. It turned out fine. So I plugged in the rectifier, checked out fine as well, plugged in the preamp tubes, checked more voltages, was fine again, and then finally putting in uh, the power tubes and plugging in the speaker, and I got sound out of it, so everything seemed fine at that point. I then checked the potentiometers, made sure they were working as intended, which they did. 
I just uh, found a scratchy noise in the reverb potentiometer, which turned out to be a um, cold solder joint in the reverb circuit, which I fixed. And out of that, I was pretty much ready to adjust the bias. So in order to set up the bias, I first adjusted the trim pot on the bias circuit to the minimum, turned on the amp and took a few measurements. So it starts by measuring the voltage drop across the left and the right side of the primary of the output transformer. So on the left side I got 2.95 volts and on the right side I got 3.05 volts. Then I switched my ground plug to the chassis of the amp and I measured the plate voltage on pin 3 of the output sockets and I got 4 or 9 volts. Then I turned off the amp and I measured also the resistance across each side of the primary of the output transformer. So on the left side I got 156.2 ohms and on the right side I got 172.5 ohms. So now if you divide um, 2.95 by 156.2, you're going to get a plate current of 18.8 milliamps. And then I'll do the same on the right side. So 3.05 divided by 152.5 ohms gives me a 17.68 milliamps. If I multiply this plate current by the plate voltage, it gives me the power dissipation of the tube. In this case, 7.72 watts and 7.23 watts. So you can see if I'm aiming for 70% um, of the max dissipation of my 6v6s, uh, which is around 10 watts, I'm pretty low at the moment. So in order to fix that, I played around with the um, bias stream pods and I brought it up a little bit. And after a few tries, I got these values. Uh, so let's go through them together. The voltage drop went to 3.95, uh, 3.90 sorry volts uh, on the left side and 4.02 volts on the right side. I measured again the plate voltage, which dropped down to 4 or 5 volts. Uh, so if I divide this 390 by 156 that I had before, it gives me pretty much 25 milliamps. And on the right side, it gives me um, 23.3 milliamps. Uh, so if I multiply um, the plate current by the plate voltage, it gives me the dissipation of the tubes, which is 10.10 .10 watts on the left side and 9.43 watts on the right side, which is much closer to the value I'm aiming for, uh, 9.8 watts. So I know these values are pretty conservative, but with the amp being a uh, bias shifting tremolo, I prefer to keep it low. And then we'll see in the future uh, if I can bring it up a little bit or not. We'll see. So to stay true to the originals, I also made a spacer out of cardboard and two strips of wood to give a little more wiggle room to the springs in the reverb tank. Then I put the tank back in its bag and I also made a strap that holds the reverb tank in place just like on the originals. And from there I can assemble everything back into the cabinet starting with the chassis, uh, putting the chassis straps in with the screws, tightening the chassis a little bit, plugging in the speaker and the reverb wires, uh, putting back on the lower back panel, then I'm securing the power cable. Once that's done, uh, flip around the app just to um, adjust the position of the chassis in relation to the grill cloth, make sure it's nicely aligned uh, visually. Then I tighten the screw so it doesn't vibrate. And then I just put back on the upper back panel and we're done. So I have to say, I'm really pleased with the way this amplifier build turned out. I think it looks great, and even more importantly, it actually works and sounds good. I definitely learned a lot building this amplifier, and I'm looking forward to doing that again to learn even more. I know you guys are going to want a sound demo, and I'll do that as soon as possible. I thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers!